Welcome to the first episode of the doors tutorial series and in today's video we shall add four blueprints we're gonna have the doors we're gonna have interaction we're gonna have the information storage and the structure and we're gonna have a door master for this and then once we have our doors in the world we can walk up to them press e they open up or on themselves we can click e again to close them faster we can go to the other side and they're gonna open in the other direction as you can see if we walk around back to this side they're opening away from us so first let's create some of the blueprints that we are going to need so first one let's create a blueprint interface which is going to allow us to interact with the doors and let's call this door inter interface let's open this up and for this one we need one function which i'm going to call open something because we will be opening drawers with this one as well then let's create an input which is a component so that we know which is the, which component is the door and the type needs to be the primitive component type there we go we can save that then let's create a structure which is going to hold all the information about that specific door so let's create a structure let's call this s doors let's open this up and here we're going to need quite a few entries so let's add a few so the first one is the component so this might be door or drawer uh, so the type again is the primitive component type then let's have let's have a default rotation which then should be a rotator and then we also need a default location and the, the location is for the drawers and rotation is going to be for the doors location is a vector value then let's call this is door which is going to be a boolean value for me because i will have doors and drawers so i can get get by with just using the boolean value if you have more then you might have to use an enum instead then let's see let's call this is locked and then the next one could be the direction so basically in which directions the door should open then we need a key and i'm going to use just a regular integer for that one and the last one is going to be the code so later on we will have code locks on doors as well and for that one i'm going to use a string so we have all set up in here now let's create ourselves a new blueprint class just let's select a regular actor and let's call this door master let's open this up and let's add our interface to this so in the class settings we can now add a door interface there we go compile and save that let's add a new variable and let's call this doors and this needs to be our s doors structure type and this will contain information about all the doors in that one specific actor now for now this is going to be good we're going to come back to this in a second but now let's create another let's create another blueprint class uh, we could actually create a child from this as well let me just create a new actor let's call this door let's open this up and let's change the class settings from a parent class from the actor to our door master there we go compile and save this now let's add a new component to this so we we're gonna need the static mesh for this one and let's look for a door and by default there is a sm door in the starter content but it doesn't have any collision so that's very bad but we can click on this magnifying glass which brings us to it let's open this up if we enable the uh, show collision you can see there is no collision so now we can add a box simplified collision and this now created as a collision box so that is all good we can then select our static mesh back again and scroll down so we find collisions and well it changed it to block all dynamic and that's exactly the, what we need now let's go to our event graph and since this is a child of the door master this thing is going to have the things that we need all all basically everything that's inside of the master so we can get the doors array value there we go we get that then on begin play what we can do is add a new entry to this so we can add let's plug that in let's split this and let's provide all the information that it requires us to so first let's drag in the static mesh so this is our door we can plug that into the component then for the default rotation we need to get the relative so this is very important we want to get the relative rotation inside of this specific actor that the door is living in so let's connect that then we also want to get the relative location as well so we plug that in as well and then we can select now the values uh, manually so first is door true this is door is it locked well for now no the direction is going to be left at default key zero and i'm going to leave the code out for now later for different doors we might add codes as well 
Now, one last thing that I want to do inside of the door actor is add some box collisions. So let's add those so that we can change the direction in which the doors would open. So let's move these out a little bit. Let's move one of them in the front of the door. Let's make this quite a bit bigger. So let's say like 100 by 100 by 100. So this sh should be roughly decent. Uh, maybe you would need a little bit bigger of a box. It depends on the range of your interactions uh, because what is important is that you walk inside of this this area. Otherwise, the door movement direction is not going to change. So let's create another one and that one goes to the back like this. And then in the event graph by selecting both boxes, so select one first, scroll down and you're going to see the events bar and we can add on component begin overlap event and we want to do the same thing for both of these so let's have two of those then from both of these we want to cast to the character so in my case I have the first person character because we want to make sure that the character is interacting with the doors not doors themselves so if this is true when we don't need anything from the character we just want to make sure that that is a character that is overlapping this door and once we know that it is that then we can get our doors so we can get the doors again and we can then get a copy to a specific index and so over here we are adding just one entry to the doors so that means that the index is going to be zero so then what we can do is split this and actually let me move this down a little bit and then from the array we can set the array element connect that the execution index again is zero and then we can replug some of the pins. So first component goes into the component, rotation, location, is door, uh, is locked, and then the direction we're going to plug in manually. So we need key and we need the code. So for the top one, I hope it, sh it needs to be false. We might have to swap these around. So first let's leave the item direction at false. Now let's copy this whole bunch like so. Let's connect the execution, connect the other actor. And in this one, let's set the item direction to be true. Uh, but like I said, we might have to change this the other way around. We are all good in here. Let's go to our door master now and let's start working in the event graph. So first, what we want to do is right click and let's run our open something event, which comes with the interface that we added to this actor. And then what we want to do next is create a new function and let's call this find door because first we need to find which is the door that we are interacting with because like I said if we have multiple uh, we might have some issues because we need to find the correct one so the input now again is going to be the component then we need the primitive component type and let's see so first let's drag in our doors then we want to do a loop for each with a break because we want to go through all the doors that we might have and then we want to break the S doors structure and we want to check if the component that's inside of the structure is equal to the component that we are passing along. So whether we are interacting uh, with the possible doors perhaps. So then we can do this. This can be our condition. We can do an if branch. If that is true, we need a couple of local variables. So first we need a local uh, local found so whether we found the door let's make this into a boolean and a single value and then we need another one which is the local index so that we know which is the index in the array and then we can use an integer for that and then on true we can set both of these values so we have the local found and the local index so local found true and local index is the one that comes from the array index and then the execution can go to the break so that we would be done with the loop in case if we find the correct component so now after a quick reroute from the loop completion we can do a return and now we can return these values so we are going to need two outputs so first we need a let's call this found which is a boolean and then we have the index so index and that one is an integer there we go let's plug in so let's compile just in case first and then we can use the local found and the local index there we go and our find door function is functioning now back in the graph in the event graph on open something we can then launch our find door and we can now provide the component for it once we have looked for the door then we can do an if branch check to check if we found 
And then if we found, then we need a new custom event and let's call this open door. And for this one, we need an input, which is the index, which is the integer. The, so basically this one right here. So then we can from true, we can run our open door and this gives us a new parameter. So let's refresh the nodes. There we go. And then we can plug in the index like so. So now let's start working on our open doors function, which is going to be the last function for now. So let's get our doors first, and then we want to get a copy to the index that we are providing in the inputs. Then from there, we can split this and let's see. So first uh, I want to check what is the direction. So I want to do an if on the direction. There we go. So we have a direction. And now I want to add a new variable value, which is going to be a direction dir value. And this needs to be a float value. And this is going to be a very simple idea. Uh, so by default, we're going to have one. And depending on the direction, this is going to be one or minus one. And then we are going to multiply our timelines value so that we would uh, rotate the doors in the positive or negative axis, so to say. So then from both of these, from true and false, we want to set this value. So let's set the value in both of these. So in the top one, I'm going to set this to be one. And on the bottom, I'm going to set this to be minus one. Then once we have done that, we can then do another if branch check from both of these. And now what we want to check for is first, we want to get our component. And from the component, we want to get the relative rotation. So basically the current rotation that we have right now. And also we want to get the default rotation. And from both of these, we want to check if they are equal so that we would know whether the doors are in the default position as of right now or not. So for the error tolerance, use something like one. Now that should be a good number. And then once we've done that, then that can be our branch condition. Then from here, what we want to do is we want to add a timeline. So add timeline at the bottom of the screen and let's call this door timeline. Let's open this up. Let's I'm going to set the length to be like two seconds so that the doors would open within two seconds. Let's add a flow track. Let's call this door value. Uh, doesn't matter too much. What we want to do is right click add key select the key so it has to be yellow and then you can change the time so zero at the beginning the value needs to be zero so that they are standing still in the default position then let's add another key and at the time two so the, at the end of this timeline because it's two seconds i want this to be 90 uh, so that my doors would rotate 90 degrees then select this zoom to fit vertical so you can see both of these select one hold shift select the other one right click and select the auto so that this gives this a little curve so that the animation would be a bit smoother. So now that we are done with this, what we want to do next is set up some math logic for the movement of the doors. So first, what I will do is get the default rotation. So I'm going to reroute this a little bit and then I want to break this rotator value. And then also I want to reroute my component to the back. So I'm going to reroute, not this one. We need to reroute. And then once we reroute it, we can let's reroute this once more. And then we can set the uh, relative rotation. So set relative rotation and that can go into our update node, uh, update execution pin. There we go. So it should look like this. Then we can make the rotator and we can connect our x and y axis because we're going to rotate doors only in the z axis and then for that one what we want to do is first we want to multiply our door value so multiply float float times float and the other value will be our door direction value so basically in which direction shall we, so it's positive or a negative value then we want to add our z axis from the default rotation and then we want to do a plus and we want to then add this bottom value and then that can be our Z axis. So it should look something like this. Now that we are done with this, the last things left for us to do is so from the branch false, we want to go to the reverse and from the finished, what I actually want to do is a small delay. So let's say like four seconds and then I want the doors to be closed. So let's create a delay and then from the complete, we can go directly to reverse. So let me just reroute this real quick and let's set up everything we need in the character to interact with the doors. 
Now, what I want to do is go to my character real quick and set up some small line trace. So on keyboard E key event, I want to do a line trace by a channel. And then so for the starting position, let's get our camera. So we have the first person camera in my case. So I want to get the world location. We can plug that directly into the start so that the ray with the line would begin right at the camera. Then we want to get the forward vector. So we can get a direct line forward. So let's multiply forward vector with an integer. And let's say we want that line to be like 400 units in front. And then we want to add our world location of the camera plus this forward vector value times 400. And that can be our end position. Then from the return value of the line trace, we want to do an if because we want to check whether we have hit something. If we have, we can break our hit result and on true, we can then open something message. And for the component, let's use our hit component. And for the target, let's use our hit actor. So it should look something like this. So now if we would go to the game world and let's bring in a couple of doors. So we have door one, door two, two, door three, door four and five. That should be good enough. Let's press play and let's have a look. So if we interact with E, here we go. We need to walk a little bit closer. As you notice, those ones open the other way around. We can close these a little faster and after four seconds, these should close as well. Now, if we spam the E key, for example, you can see we can open and instantly close them. But if we spam this a lot, this might start to act a little odd. As you can see, it closed midway through. Uh, so that that might happen to you as well. But um, other than that, I think everything should be working just fine. So that's going to be it for today's video. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Make sure you leave a like, subscribe and I see you in the next video.